Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we're going to do a, another rehouse today and this is from, well, for a spider that we picked up at the Southern Invert Show. And as many of you will know, it was our first invert show where we actually traded ourselves. And we had a stall, a stand, and um, yeah, we had an absolutely fantastic day. Cool meeting everybody. Now, we picked up a black fang wandering spider. Now you would have remembered a couple of weeks ago, we uh, done a video on the red fang wandering spider. And uh, I saw these at the show and as, as we was having a quick walk about, and they are really, really impressive. So I thought, right, we need one in the beastie room. So we actually bought two. So uh, we can, we're, we're edging our bets. And one of them has already molted out. This one hasn't. So we're gonna get this one rehoused and, um, and see what happens. And as many of you know, quite often or not with these spiders, these are all wild cork spiders. They're, they're not really bred in the UK at all. No one really does them. Um, in Europe, I think there's a little bit more goes on. People are a little bit more interested in their true spiders in Europe. We seem a little bit slow this side. We don't really do a lot. So um, many of the spiders that come in are, are wild caught and they're gravid. So there's always an opportunity that we can get one of these spiders and it will end up producing an egg sac. And quite often this is because it's been in a box, it's been shipped around, it's done all sorts of things. It's probably not really had a consistent temperature and humidity at all. So although we can do our best when we're keeping them in these pots, when um, the sellers are moving them from A to B all the time, it's not an ideal situation. So when we then get them home and we put them in a setup and we get it all right, like in this room, we put them in here, the constant warm temperature, the humidity in this room, everything, quite often or not, that spurs these wild caught spiders to produce a sack. And more often than not, they are fertile. They're really, really cool. So um, you never know. Fingers crossed, we might, might get a sack if we're very, very lucky. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're putting our, um, our drainage layer. And this is because we do want to um, give these guys a fair amount of humidity. Now there's not a great deal known about them. Same as the red fang, very, very little known about them. And um, so we have to just treat them with a bit of respect and treat them, you know, in, in care, we're looking at getting them similar to um, how we would our um, Cupriana Saley and things like that. And if you've ever kept other stuff before, like the Brazilians and things, then we can follow the same kind of care that we give them as well. It's all the same. So um, we're just going to see how they go. Now these guys come from the Cameroon. So again, it's going to be warm, it's going to be humid. We've got another plant here. Now, some of you sharp-eyed guys, oh, just teasing the roots out there. Some of you sharp-eyed guys would have realized with some of these plants that we've been using of late. These aren't house plants. These are just our normal common old garden, garden plants that you might find in your borders and things around your garden. And this is something that we've been playing with for a little while now. And um, we've had them on and off over the years and tried different ones. And some of the ferns that look really, really pretty haven't survived too well. I'm not sure whether it's just too warm or whatever, but they've not done so well. But some of the other stuff, these are an evergreen plant. I forget the actual name of them. I don't think there is even a name on, no, there's not even a name on the thing, on the pot. So we're gonna give them a try. And basically with these garden plants, they require less light and they are relatively really hardy. So the hope he, the hope is, that we can get them to um, do really well in our enclosures. That's the plan anyway. So what we're gonna do, we've got some natural bark here. This is really quite soft, so we can snap this, break it to where we want it. Now, a fair amount of the literature is saying that these guys are quite terrestrial 
but they're, they're a bit of a mix. They're semi-terrestrial, semi-arboreal. So we're going to put them in here and we're going to just see really how they get on. It might simply be a case later on that we end up um, changing it completely and changing it over for maybe more of a, a terrestrial type setup. We can only play around and see what happens. I think what we're going to do is we're going to put this one in here. Now if they are terrestrial, that's all we're going to need in here. We're not going to need a lot. Stick a little bit of moss in there. And that will just help out with some of the humidity. Also adds a nice bit of colour, gives it a little bit of variation. You can see we've got a big slab of moss here. This is all wild, this is all what we've collected ourselves. And the beauty of having a big piece like this is we can literally just trim off what we want. Now these bits that I'm pulling out here, these are um, from conifer trees. And these are really old, they're just dried up. They're no good anymore, they're not going to do anything. But I just think they're unsightly, so I pulled them out. That is the only reason. Right, so we're going to put this bit here. And the idea here is that we're going to, hopefully, by putting it around the base of the plant, we'll seal in some of the moisture so the plant don't dry out too quick. See, everything has a reason. Right, there we go. Nice and simple. Nothing too, too crazy. Which is that. I think we'll put all of that in there. It's really interesting actually. In our mulch bin here, we keep the lid on this and it's, it basically stays dark. But when we leave a piece of moss in like this, the moisture in there keeps that moss alive. Although it gets very, very little light. So it's really, it's really quite interesting how the moss behaves. It won't be able to survive in there absolutely forever, but it will last a good while. Right then, so we've got our, um, our water bowl. Literally turn it off, unplug our glue gun. Go that in there. All right, so we're just going to water our plant a little bit on our moss, a little bit here. And what we can do is we can gradually build this up. So we're now we're just going to flood a little bit of water down into the clay balls, but by doing it into the side like we're doing now. We can soak down into the clay balls without absolutely drowning the whole enclosure. We'll do the other side. So if you look on there, you'll probably be able to see that coming down and going through down into the base. You can see the water penetrating through into the clay balls. We'll stick a bit in there as well. Now you might think there's a lot of water going in here. But them clay balls will mop this up. It will soon disperse. Right, that's enough for them. Oh dear. Right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to leave the lid off again. And we're going to, fingers crossed, our black fang is going to be as well behaved as our red fang was. So again, we're going to take the lid off really, really gently. This one is almost, oh blimey, that is a big false widow. Look at that. That is a really big adult false widow. That's a female. She is huge. You can go in there. We don't really want her wandering around the room. They throw up so many egg sacs, it's unbelievable. Why is it the spiders that we don't want reproduce like crazy? 
Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to offer this up here like this. Whoa, that's a slippery pot. Well, here we go. What I really want is her to just walk out on her own. Look at that beautiful spider. That is an absolutely gorgeous looking spider. So we're just going to give her a little tiny touch on her leg. Hopefully she won't react too badly. Here we go. See the black. See how we're maintaining contact. We just want her to find her way. Look at the colouring on that spider. That is phenomenal. The black and that cream carapace. Wow, that is one impressive, impressive spider. She's gone. She's gone. Hopefully, she'll be true to her name and she'll wander around. And we might just get another look at her in a minute. So as we were saying before, we're looking at getting these guys to a decent humidity. So we're looking at 70 to 80% humidity, really. Anywhere around there. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit higher or a little bit lower. We will find what suits them best. Here she comes. Now, is she going to hide on the underside of that? Oh, I thought she was going to come out. She's checking it out. We might just be able to tease her out in a minute. Because I've got a feeling she's going to she's going to sit under there in the dark. So what we'll do, we'll try and get one last look at her. And we'll try and just tease her out very, very gently. And see if we can get her to come and sit on top of this piece of wood. That's the plan. So here we go. And we'll just take, just tease her very, very gently. See, what we're wanting to do, here she comes. What we want to do is we... We're sort of asking her to go nice and gently. She's hunkering down because it's dark in there. Here we go. Now she doesn't want to leave the darkness. No, she's not going to come out. So we're going to leave her be. She doesn't want to come out of the darkness. <laughs> I can't say as I blame her really. She's been living in this box for we don't know how long. And now she's actually coming into here. Now, one of the things that you'll find with your wandering spiders is they are pretty much nocturnal. And this is the time to come and see them. So when we want to see ours, we come in with a torch of the night time and we shine it. And quite often or not, you'll see their eyes. Their eyes literally glow in the dark. And, and this is how we know that they're out and about. And uh, it's the first sign we get to see of them. So we can actually see them across the room in their enclosures just by the shine of their eyes. They're very much like the wolf spider. They do the same. Now, we were saying we keep them at a high humidity and we're looking at keeping them fairly warm as well. So in here we're sitting around between 75 and 80 degrees in here at the moment, depending on what the outside temperature is doing. If the outside temperature um, is, is fairly constant, then our room temperature in here stays that little bit higher. If outside goes down below freezing, only a degree, only has to be a degree when we've got frost on the cars, our room temperature can quite often drop down to 75. So that's quite a drop, it's five degrees drop from our normal temperature. Now this is down to the insulation in your house, you know, or in our house. So it makes a big difference, but it's not anything to really, really worry about. They can deal with it because it's a very gradual drop and then it's a gradual rise again. And they can deal with that quite easily. And this is why we say, don't get hung up too much on the numbers, you know. Then, fluctuations are okay as long as they're steady and they'll do fine. Now in terms of food, we found that these guys do really well with red runners and crickets. Anything that's sort of moving around like that. Some of the roaches, the dubia roaches, are a little bit on the big side and um, there's, it's not worth these spiders fighting with a roach that's almost the same size as them. So you're better off giving them um, smaller roaches like the red runners or giving them crickets. And if you want to have some real fun, use the male red runners because them guys just run around. They tear around and these guys will come out and actively hunt them down. So they are really, really cool. 
hopefully maybe we'll we'll try and get a little bit of feeding footage of these guys in the future because they are really really stunning well let's hope that she has an egg sac that'll be nice so the other one has actually molted out so um it's a bit dubious we don't know right then well that's another one in the beastie room and hopefully we can pick up a male at some point and uh try our own little breeding project well i hope you like that little enclosure i'm sure she will i think she'll settle in very well right then don't forget be calm be gentle and love your spider and i will see you soon guys <laughs>